how do we identify snakes when we examine the tail, the head, and the back scales? So in snakes, you can see if the snake is having a flat compressed tail. So if the snake is having a flat compressed tail, like the fin, so it is it becomes a sea snake. And if there is a cylindrical body with a tapering tail, you can see cylindrical body. It is round like a slender and tapering tail. Then it becomes a land snake. Now, it, if it has a small belly scales, can you see this? These are the belly scales. They are more visible in this. So these are small belly scales. But they are appearing on the dorsal surface. But on the ventral surface, you can see this belly scales are not small. If it is small, then it is non-venomous. But if the belly scales are broad and they are not extending completely. Then also it is non-venomous, like the like the python, the boa. They are the constrictor. They, they these snakes do do have the bellies which are broad, but the belly scales they are broad, but they are not extending across entire width. If the broad belly scales are extending across entire width, then it is the venomous snakes if then you can examine the head the head they are having small scales so they are mostly the vipers then small scales on head with pit between the nose and eyes so you can see this the pit between the nose and the eyes so this is nose and these this these eyes the pit is there so they become the pit viper the venomous then if there is a large scale on the head then we can examine the whether there is any like see this large scale on the head right and then third upper lip shield touches eye and nose shield so third that third upper lip shield touches eye and nose shield right so if it is having a hood then it becomes a cobra and if it is not having a hood then it becomes the coral snake so this is the coral snake there is there is a, this is the coral snake and then there is cobra which is this that is with the hood so it is having small scales on the back large scales on the head right and there is ventral surface you can see the horizontal scales are there so these are the way in which we can examine then there is few snakes like crate which we are trying to examine they it is just like crate there is uh, like this is there in which you can see there is central row of snakes on the back they are enlarged they are hexagonal bands on half rings on back subcordial and undivided then it becomes a crate that is also a venomous so this is a simple way of classifying based on the scales as well as on the head and the back and the belly scales that is the ventral surface so these will help you out in further confirming your identification whether it is a venomous snake or a non-venomous snake Right, so the ventral scales, the belly scales do not cover the entire breath. Non-venomous snake that you have to understand. So these are the non-venomous snake. You can see the constricting snakes, the boas and the pythons. So they are the common name of the variety of the non-venomous snake. They are the constricting snakes. They are the mammals and birds. They common prey which is usually captured by bite, grass followed by constriction. Except for the anaconda, most boas are terrestrial, too strongly arboreal that is they live on the trees when they are small and young and they come down to live in the uh, shrubs when they become large and heavy the young one often move from the trees to the ground as they get older and larger then you can see the camouflaging look in a python they try to hide in the shrubs then the anaconda the constrictor so they are non venomous so we should not be uh, thinking that they will 
their bite will be venomous but they can construct like you can see this this uh, this is one of the constructor scene from the movies they can construct when they can uh, especially children they get become the victims of the uh, pythons as well as of the boa constructor when they are pet kept as pet pythons are kept as pet many uh, people in us they keep them as pets and sometimes if children are there sleeping they try to constrict their chest and that causes they they are not able to breathe in oxygen and they die due to asphyxia so this is the traumatic asphyxia by which the python the anaconda they can kill in this photograph you can see the belly scales they are not covering entirely to the back so that is the difference like unlike the venomous snake you can see the entire belly is covered here their belly is not entirely covering their complete ventral surface so they are non venomous right so summarizing the venomous snakes cobra is neurotoxic it is causes necrosis very swollen limb and neostigmine is the drug which helps along with anti snake venom at cobra is a hard large wood crate they are banded or they are common crate they are thin like shiny nylon rope it causes flatus flaccid bitten limb they also causes paralysis and but the limb is not so swollen you will not be able to appreciate the bite as seen in cobra or viper they are swollen and they are sometimes the site is bleeding but the crate bite is not swollen and it is flaccid there is no wound swelling the viper they are chain pattern the chit cobra they cause thick bitten limb wound swelling viper is vascular toxic very swollen limb that causes kidney failure and we have to repeat anti snake venom every 6 hourly vitamin k can be useful for achieving the hemostasis if the person is bleeding profusely from the sides like the oral cavity or sometimes the hematuria can occur so there is a 20 wbct test which is done that is 20 minutes to keep the whole blood in the vial and that will if it is not clot within 20 after 20 minutes that is a sign that it is vascular toxic so that can help you out in identifying that it is vascular toxic snake and it needs immediate anti coagulation immediate anti snake venom has to be given to control the anti coagulation which has happened so that the bleeding can be stopped okay right? so these are the few things which we need to understand while identifying we need to think of give the treatment also and then the saw scale viper this that makes a sizzling sound side winding marks on the sand desert and they are small size like thin root rope then the sea snake they are myotoxic they cause muscle ache myoglobinuria and the person victim can't swim now some they are common harmless snakes so we can identify that they are not having they are not having any venom in their bites although they do bite and sometimes people just the fear of getting bitten by a snake they think that they may die the fear of the snake is so rampant so we have to understand that not every snake bite only 30% snake bites according to the WHO study they are venomous and even when we get victims of snake bite more almost 50% are dry bites that is the venom has not been injected by the snake so that you have to understand that not all snake bite are venomous only when there are signs of envenomation like neurotoxicity drooping of eyelids person can't speak not able to breathe not able to maintain his head up that is a broken neck sign these are all signs of neurotoxicity and vascular toxicity in which the person starts bleeding from urine from oral cavity from the site of bite from in the motion or in the vomiting so these are all signs of vascular toxicity but these common harmless snakes they they are not they are also found especially in the rainy season and they get killed by people just in the fear that they may be venomous but you can see they don't have that pattern like we have discussed today neither the po cobra the crate or the vipers including the rattle snake or different so they are non venomous snakes the green snake so how do we identify them i can show you one this is the green snake you can identify this 
green snake does not have the complete uh, we can examine the snake the belly which can we can there small bellies are there and on the uh, belly scales are also small they are not large covering the entire width right so they are sea snakes they they are the tree snakes they live on the vine snake they are just look like a vine grape vine so just like bale vine ke jaise they roll around so they are non venomous so you have to understand them like similar to the sand boa it is indian red snake they are non venomous then the common cat snake and then there is bomb snake so there is there was one famous case in which we can get confused with the bomb snake whether it is bomb snake or it is great so we identify by history of snake bite the bite mark with the spondylus bleeding and dark brown urine so this is the history history of the bite the, or the person gives the history that bite mark is bleeding spondylus bleeding there there dark brown urine is there there is a viper vascular toxin bitten in a day with paralysis that is cobra bitten in night while sleeping in farm that is great mostly great are very uh, timid animals they do not come out in the daylight they are afraid of kites and their predators so they will come only in the night outside and they bite people sleeping in the farms that is on the floor they will not climb up unlike cobra so they will bite on the people sleeping on the ground floor so the basic remedy for this for preventing the great bite is sleep on a cot not on a floor in rainy season that is the learning given by dr bavaskar that we should in during rainy season we should follow two precautions for preventing the bites that is sleep on a char pai that is a bed not on the floor and second thing is to cover the char pai from all sides with a net to prevent the bites from the the mosquito right so this is to prevent the bites in rain the simple measure is to sleep on the char pai on the bed not on the floor now if the person is bitten by swimming or surfing they most mostly they may be bitten by a sea snake which is myotoxic and it causes myoglobinuria and that can cause kidney failure so these are important findings well identifying the history of the snake bite now there was one very uh, recent case which occurred with a doctor herself while buying vegetable she bought during rainy season uh, you can see the cauliflower she bought this and she found that she kept it uh, she didn't examine it she brought it in the evening evening time and she didn't examine what it may be having any worms or something and she kept in the car and she went to her home and while at home she tried to pull out the packet of the vegetable and she felt bit bitten by some insect so she immediately examined and she thought it, it is just a worm because it has belly scales by which we can examine but she uh, still went to the hospital and she stayed in the hospital she was monitored for 6 to 8 hours and then she was discharged and she came and slept at home and on the next day she was not able to wake up she died in her sleep due to the neurotoxicity which is caused by the we can examine this this is the, you, if you can examine the cauliflower in which you can see that there is a worm like folding inside but you can see that their scales are there their dorsal scale and the ventral scale so you can see there the dorsal scales are small and ventral scales are covering entirely on the belly so unlike earthworm which has the belly scales covering all over in the horizontal fashion the venomous snakes are having small scales on the dorsum and their horizontal snake horizontal bands or horizontal scales the belly scales so that makes the difference that it was a crate which was hiding in the cauliflower because he the snake tried to find a place and cauliflower has a place so he kept hiding it and the cauliflower was cut and it was brought to the shopping and from the road side the victim bought it and she got bitten by the snake so these are the cases which are occurring in the rainy season it happened last year
it was a very uh, sad full situation which occurred so we need to understand that these things do occur so what is the treatment when we think of treatment treatment of snake bite is if it is venomous signs of envenomation you have to give anti snake venom which is polyvalent covering the common pores that is the cobra ray and the two vipers so the dose is in all either it is children adults or uh, elderly dose is seen 8 to 10 vials because you have to neutralize the venom so anti snake venom it comes in the vial and it is to be reconstituted and when it is reconstituted it has to be then injected we don't have to give a test dose and if you give every 8 to 10 vials and you keep all these vials together so it will itself become like a snake right so every 6 hours we are giving and for 24 hours we are giving it will become around 30 to 40 vials so that will itself become the size of the snake so we can easily remember how much dose we have to give for giving anti snake venom in an envenomative victim although we have to manage the abc also of the patient while managing with anti snake venom because it can itself cause anaphylaxis which can further compromise the airway of the victim so we have to always keep a backup of securing the airway if the person becomes drowsy or person develops breathing difficulty then is or the airway get compromised due to bleeding so these things we have to monitor now coming to other amphibians which are causing the poisoning they they are also in the herpetology they are common the sea snakes we have discussed already then the frogs the poison dart frogs if accidentally ingested they can cause the beta toxin can cause paralysis and dyspnea then there is the large fishes and the puffer fish they are also they are fishes so they are also seafood then the invertebrates so they are vertebrates are their depressants they paralytics and invertebrates as we discussed the same principle applies here they are stimulant they irritant they are sympathetics the shellfish oyster clam mussels snail so they are, they cause paralysis or tremors convulsion the jellyfish cause sea water sickness itchy anaphylactication from the the jellyfish the long uh, their tentacles are there which can cause anaphylactication the sea water sickness multiple pattern abrasions will be there now coming to the venomous lizard the only venomous lizards are the gila monster which are neurotoxic and they curl just like the snake you can see and they can bite similarly like snakes but they are very dull they they do not move much right so this is look alike not exactly like but you can see the look alike the pattern is similar of the gila monster in which there is head and then there is the body and the tail the pattern of is there which is venomous lizard while we examine another which is which looks like venomous it changes the colors that is the chameleon chameleon girgit it is it also comes in rainy season but it is non venomous although it changes colors from blue green but it is for camouflaging himself for from saving from the predators so it changes from blue to green to red colors bright colors but to hide in the trees from the predators so it is non venomous so should not we should not be afraid of the bite of chameleon then there are dart frogs they are poisonous when eaten and they can cause neurotoxicity so these are all the toxic herpetology we have discussed today and th these are the recommended reading which should be referred especially the snake bite management guidelines which have been issued by ministry of health and family welfare as well as the guidelines which are issued by the who recently in 2016 so the take home messages and as in the rhyme we can say that on its venomous bite you can droop inside become lax not tight that is become paralyzed and you lose your tightness in your limbs you will not be able to hold your eyelids your neck and you will become lax you will become relaxed but this relaxation is due to the neurotoxicity and it can further compromise your airway and you will not be able to breathe in and you can't reflexively bite to that venomous organism because then it is it is not beneficial for you it will be more harmful for you because it can bite again so never try to attempt to bite 
those two defend yourself and antisnikanam esv given in the dose right it's transparent in white that is it comes transparent liquid and it should not be turbid when dissolved if it remains turbid that is a sign that it has expired so once the powder which is white in color it is dissolved in its solvent and if it is remains white turbid in color that is means that it is not useful then it can save you even in midnight so anti snake venom is very important it can be helpful so try to avoid snake bite stay safe happy learning thank you